Okay. Okay. Do I have to say everything over again? <laughs> you can start where you're at and start with prayer. Okay. All right. So, yes. Uh, I would ask every, everybody online to please uh, pray with me. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we thank you. We praise you on today, oh God. Just thanking you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy, Lord. Lord, thank you for allowing us to see another day, Lord God. Lord God, but as we attempt to go through our lesson on tonight, Lord God, Lord, I ask that you be with me, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you move me, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, and you speak, oh God. Lord God, we just thank you, praise you for everyone that's on the line on tonight. Lord God, we thank you for our Sunday school class on tonight. Thank you for those that are traveling on tonight. Lord God, and ask that you be with us, Lord God, and be with them, Lord God, and return them back safely, Lord. Lord, as we lift you up, Lord God. Lord, because you said if you be lifted, you would draw all men unto you, Lord God. So we lift you on tonight, Lord, and ask that you be with us, lead and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Are we still there? Yes, we're here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I guess because I'm the way I'm doing this... <laughs> So I can't hear anything whatsoever in the background. So that's the reason why I say, are we still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so we are familiar with our lesson on tonight. Our lesson is uh, must be born again. You must be born again. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> when we're talking about being born again, we're talking about a new birth, new beginnings, a transformation, uh, second chances, and speaking of second chances, uh, before being born again, uh, we all have had the need of a second chance or wish we have had uh, a second chance at something. Uh, we, ran, we ran into some bumps and bruises where we felt like nothing was going right for us. <clears throat> Everything we tried to do uh, that we thought was right fell through. No finances, self-esteem was falling, was failing, and in some cases, hope was gone. Literally tried on every side, as the Word of God has said. But if we had just tried Jesus first, instead of everything else, we would have had that second chance a lot sooner in life than we did. But we now know also that everything happens for a reason and everything works together for the good of those who love the Lord according to his purpose. <clears throat> according to his purpose. So the word says we must be born again. So when we look at that word must, what? It means it is not to be overlooked or missed. It indicates that you think it is very important or necessary for something to happen. <clears throat> so Jesus had been teaching and performing miracles when Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a very important ruler of the Jews came to him by night. He belonged to the highest governing body of the Jewish people, the Sanhedrin, if I'm pronouncing that right. If uh, any of you know the correct pronunciation, please tell me, because I probably have said it again wrong. Okay, no takers. know what you're saying, so it's, it's fine. It's fine. Yes, Sanhedrin. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, Sanhedrin, but you were saying it right. Okay, okay. Thank you. Many of these Jewish leaders were bound by tradition and legalism. 
There are a number of reasons why one may have suspect him coming at night because, you know, he, he would come by night to uh, talk to Jesus. And the Sunday school book suggests that he met Jesus at night so no one else would see him spending time with him. Or it could have been he did not want to be seen as a traitor. Uh, Jesus had rebuked their legalism on several occasions. Fear of the feedback he would receive from the other Jewish leaders, or maybe that was the only time he could have have a general conversation and seek answers. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're just throwing that out there. There could be a number of reasons why he chose to see him at night. Uh, Let me make a comment not, on that, if I I'm may. I'm sorry? Let me make a comment on that, if I may. Yeah, you can comment. Okay. There, there are two other occasions in the book of John where Nicodemus' name comes up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, John 7 and 51, and again, John 19 and 39. And both okay. times when Nicodemus is mentioned, it says he that came to Jesus by night. In mm -hmm. other words, uh, it's, there's a focus on the fact that he came by night on right. two separate occasions. So for some reason, John is mentioning this multiple times. And in the Bible, when things are mentioned multiple times, it has a significance. Uh, it means something. And mm -hmm. some people do things at night because, out of fear of being, being exposed. And uh, it seems to me, I'm just saying this, that John was pointing out this man started off in a fearful condition because in spite of what he was mentioned in a positive light, but he came at night. So he initially started off with some doubt, some apprehension, and it was it's kind of it was kind of shady, if I could use that word. Just a thought. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, I accept your thought, but I I think I did mention uh, it could have been out of fear, you know, as well as you know, fear of of the other Jewish uh, leaders. Uh, uh, you know, looking at him, looking up on him as a traitor, you know, and, and like you say, just complete fear, period, you know, of numerous of reasons. So, yes, thank you for that comment. <clears throat> okay. Uh, um, Nick, Nicodemus, um, excuse me, one, Nicodemus acknowledged Jesus by saying, Rabbi, right? <laughs> Um, excuse me, one second. I, one of my phones went down, so I just had to, let me bring that one up. Okay. Now, there we go. Um, yeah, Jesus, um, he acknowledged Jesus by saying, rabbi, you know, being very respectful. And uh, what he said was, we know you are a teacher sent from God <clears throat> because no man can do these miracles that you did unless God be with him. <clears throat> so the observation is Jesus came to free men from slavery to sin and from the chains of legalism. And we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So the meeting between Jesus and Nicodemus was more than an encounter between two religious leaders. It was a collision between two philosophies, two opposing views of salvation. Any comments? Of what they think, what you think those opposing views 
on salvation may have been. Uh, well, uh, evangelist um, uh, Dunlap, I think one of them would be that um, the salvation, you know, I guess the Sanhedrins, they were really up on the law. And they thought, you know, about being, uh, following the law was the way mm -hmm. to be saved. And then mm -hmm. um, Jesus was trying to show them it's, it's not just following the law to the T uh, that's going to save you. It's, you're not saved by your works. And it wow. was more or less, he's trying to show them that salvation comes through faith, mm -hmm. um, not mm -hmm. by works. But mm -hmm. your works uh, show your faith in a sense. And see, they, mm -hmm. they felt that, like, um, that, say, if you follow, if you didn't do anything on the Sabbath day, and then I think Jesus, uh, in one parable, rebuked him. He said something about uh, if his cow was in, in a ditch, wouldn't you pull it out or something along that lines? I might be uh, paraphrasing it wrong, but something along that line. So they were thinking, because I didn't do anything during the Sabbath makes me following the law, which makes me righteous. But um, it's not doing the law to the T mm -hmm. that's going to save you. It's, it's through your faith. And so mm -hmm. I think those were the two different types of... Um, religious views i guess you could say okay okay you you pretty much right there on it um um it it, it says um that uh nicodemus uh thought the person did the work like you said jesus says but jesus said god does the work okay so then uh to views encompass all views, all the world religion can be placed in one or two camps, and that was religion or grace. Uh, it said that uh, the legalist believes that the supreme force behind salvation is you. If you look right, speak right, and belong to the right segment of the right group, you would be saved. The brunt of responsibility doesn't lie with God. It lies within you. That's what the legalist believes. But then, you know, the spirituality is Jesus says, come not from church attendance or good deeds or correct doctrine, but heaven itself. We know that uh, the spirit comes from above. <clears throat> so that was good, uh, Evangelist Lowry. Uh, I appreciate that comment. And anybody else at any time, please jump in. Uh, I, you know, do ask for your help and and willing to receive. Um, I'm I'm learning along with you, so uh, please don't hesitate. <clears throat> okay, so okay if we have no more then i would go on to say um uh, you you know you do have you do have those that think there is another way right but um uh, but there you know they they think that there is another way and even we know people today you know when you talk to them and stuff and they don't have the full concept of of being saved and uh um they think that there's another way to get to heaven, you know, besides the straight and narrow. Uh, they think we have some of those that think that, you know, their good deeds would get them into heaven uh, or whatever it is they do. It talks about in the word of God. I can't tell you exactly where it is, but when you have all of those that want to uh, let the Lord know how, what all they've done in his name, you know, uh, we we fed the people in your name. We 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 took people to the hospital in your name. You know we uh, did mouth to mouth resuscitation on them. You know whatever they came up with. But then he said, you know, I never knew you. So uh, so there is a way, and it's the straight and narrow way. And Jesus said that nobody can come to the Father except by me, and no one. We'll see what the kingdom of God 
until they are born again. <clears throat> so, um, so you know, who who is me, Jesus? When he said nobody can come except by me, who is me? Which I already said, it's Jesus Himself. The same one that said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And and when Nicodemus heard these words, let me get on over here. Now, when when Nicodemus heard those words, these words, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you know, see the king. I know there's two two kind of different interpretations I've seen. I've seen where it said he cannot see the kingdom of God, and then there's one where he said he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. So um, I don't know. I, when I looked at that, I kind of thought about I kind of thought about Moses when he lift up the serpent and. Uh, just as he lift up the servant, the men, uh, men of God has to be lifted up as well. But when I think about Mo, I, when I look at enter and see, and I know I probably put too much in, it's probably nothing like this, but I was thinking, you know, you can um, enter something and not see it. And then you can see something and not be able to enter it. Just like Moses, he saw the kingdom, but he wasn't able to go in at the time. So uh, just saying that, not that that means a whole lot, but I just for myself wonder the difference when some would say see and, and others would say enter. Any comments on that? Yeah, there's, uh, I think that there's two things going on there. The first thing that happens is Nicodemus didn't even ask the question about the kingdom, but mm -hmm. Jesus already knew what was on his mind. Mm -hmm. And not uh, it was on his mind. And he look look at who he is. He is a religious leader trying mm -hmm. to lead people for something he don't really know anything about. So he wow. was in a he was in a predicament and didn't realize what kind of predicament he, he was really in. He's supposed mm -hmm. to be leading people towards God and didn't really know anything about God's kingdom. Now, that's ironic mm -hmm. if you really think about it. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of us is mm -hmm. not second, third a generation Pentecostal. So we had the same type of thing going on with us. We thought mm -hmm. we was right and we wasn't right because we didn't know what we really was looking for. Mm -hmm. But Jesus looks at him and understands what his need is and try to direct him to what he should be looking for. He should be looking for the kingdom of God, and he wasn't there yet, even though he had mm -hmm. the, he was a Pharisee of all things, and the law was not enough. That's not going to get you to the kingdom, but mm -hmm. it's the start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that's that's good. That's good. I, and um, and you're right. And I, I and I guess that's where when Jesus asked him or told him, are, "Are you not a teacher? Do you not know these things?" So, um, and 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 Jesus was, I, I believe, was preparing him for what was to come. Uh, because he knew that his crucifixion, crucifixion was uh, wasn't long, and so uh, Nicodemus, you know, he had been around and he stuck around for a long time, even after the crucifixion. But I have another question when talking about um, <clears throat> um, um. Jesus preparing Nicodemus when he told him that you must uh, be born again. Uh, do do you do you believe? Because at that time, the the the, the church the church itself had not been established. So you know, like now, you know, we know that we baptize, we we repent, baptize in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. But what was 
Um, first of all, do you believe that Nicodemus was saved? Anybody? I don't. I don't think he. This. I don't think he was saved at that point. He was doing mm -hmm. religion. There's difference between religion and relationship. He knew mm -hmm. the law, mm -hmm. which is religion, but he didn't have a relationship with the person that that he was uh, serving. And he said, mm -hmm. you must be born again. When he said that, he wasn't even thinking spiritual. He was thinking <laughs> natural. How do you go right. you know, into the mother's womb again and be born mm -hmm. again? Because he couldn't see it. There's a scripture, I'm driving, but I, I can't uh, pull it up. But it was talking about how the enemy has blinded, uh, mm -hmm. uh, talks about blinding the people. That's why he couldn't see the kingdom of God. Because the enemy... Um, blinds the people until God reveals it to you if you're not going to see uh what salvation really is uh and that's mm -hmm. why he was thinking carnally um mm -hmm. when he said you must be born again he, he didn't understand the spiritual connotation um mm -hmm. but he, he he only saw the natural going into my mom and come at that mm -hmm. point I don't believe he was saved uh, no. Well, he wasn't saved at that point. He just had a form of religion. And that's a lot okay. of times people think that I can go to church on Sunday and uh -huh. I can be, I'm, I'm saved because I go to church every Sunday or every Wednesday and I'm saved. Mm -hmm. That's religion. But it, they mm -hmm. have no relationship with the one that they're going to church to, to, to get to know. <laughs> they have no relationship. And so. Right. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of where Nicodemus was. He was uh, religious, but he uh -huh. he wasn't uh, mm -hmm. saved in that okay. sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, would it be honest to say that some of us may have thought like Nicodemus when we first heard uh, being born again? And before coming into the knowledge, uh, you know, I, for one, would say, you, I, you know, when I first heard that, you know, as a kid being in church and all that stuff, you know, you know how you were born uh, in the flesh. So, yeah, that come to mind. Yeah. Well, how do you do that again? You know, so. Um, being that Nicodemus was not spiritual and did not know, then I guess that was a legitimate question for him. Uh, and like you say, he was not saved at that time, but do you believe he was saved after, you know, when it was all said and done? Do you believe that he was saved? Anybody? I, I don't recall him um, in the scriptures ever coming mm -hmm. back and saying he did what it took. As he says, you must be, in order to be saved, There's, mm -hmm. as you must be born of the water, which is the baptism, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then born of the spirit is the receiving of the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I right. don't recall, unless someone else has a comment or a thought on that, but I don't recall reading where mm -hmm. Nicodemus ever followed those two procedures. Okay. Um, he may have, but I don't remember reading about it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, and I won't say that it, that is there. It's just a thought provoking question for me because. Oh, I, yeah, that's a good I'm, thought. <laughs> yeah, because I'm intended to believe that he was in that upper room with the 120 souls that were um, saved. Um. And now I don't know by what measure they were baptized with then. You know, we know we are baptized in his name, but what measure they were, the disciples and him and all the rest of them was baptized in. It's up, I, I mean, I don't know. We don't know. I would like to know, though. Uh, but anyway, it's just a thought, just provoking question and conversation. So please just jump in. Let me just share your thoughts on it. Hey. Like they say, there's no right or wrong answers, right? <laughs> we just, we just saying what, you know. Excuse me. If they were in the upper room and they, mm -hmm. and they, uh, 
especially those who were under the teaching of Jesus, Jesus had already told them to baptize in his name before he ascended. So if they were, and then he told them, you know, after he ascended, or he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait till they be endowed with power and, you know, receive the Holy Ghost. So after they received the Holy Ghost, those who were saved in the upper room, they, they got baptized afterwards, I, I believe. And of course, if they did, then they were saved because they were baptized in the name of Jesus. They was baptized in the correct manner. That's what I believe. Sister uh, Bess, I think they got baptized Acts in the... Acts 241 says it. Yeah. Acts 2 and 40. Say that again. Acts 2 and 41 says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were baptized. Yeah, mm -hmm. after uh, Peter uh, stood up and, and said, repent, because yep. mm -hmm. they got convicted. Uh -huh. After the Holy Ghost came, they, you know, it says, you know, he <laughs> sent them back to the upper room to wait. And mm -hmm. they were baptized prior to that unto John's baptism, which was the repentance, uh, the baptism of right. repentance. And then uh, uh, some of them were, I, I do believe. But then when um, the Holy Ghost go back into Jerusalem and wait, and then mm -hmm. when they were in the upper room and they began to speak in other tongues, they went mm -hmm. down and then uh, Peter began to preach. And he says, because mm -hmm. uh, they thought they were drunk. Because the, the Holy Ghost came upon them and all those people, they were hearing them speak in this foreign language. And then he said, uh, uh, that same Jesus who you crucified is the, the it was the Lord, the one that they the Messiah, the one that they had been seeking for. And so they got convicted. And he said, then what shall we do to be saved? And he says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. which is the difference and the name of Jesus for the remission, which is the removal of your sins. Until your sins have been removed, you're not saved. And then it says, because uh, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. So he said, in order to complete the process, you got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And uh, for the remission or the removal of your sins. And you, and then it said, you shall be refilled with the Holy Ghost. But they, those that were in the upper room got filled first. Mm -hmm. And because the baptism before Jesus died was in, in uh, bapt uh, the baptism of repentance. And John mm -hmm. introduced that. So unless someone else has a comment. Anybody else? The only comment that I had, it goes back to um, the book of John, and it just basically uh, states uh, finally Nicodemus identifies himself with Jesus. Let me just read it. Uh, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the spear of the Jews asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. Verse 39 says, and Nicodemus who first came to Jesus by night also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys about a hundred pounds. Now, mm. um, this is now where that was, he- I, I'm sorry, that was, that was Nicodemus, right? That was Nicodemus also. He he finally identifies himself with being identified mm -hmm. with Jesus. So right. you gotta you gotta some somewhere identify yourself with Jesus. And so mm -hmm. he was willing to do that. Um after that, what happens? I don't have any Bible for that. <laughs> All right. Are you reading from uh John 19, um uh 19 uh at 39? Read yes. that. Okay. I, this is, a, it, it says, uh, and Nicodemus, who came at first uh, to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about 100 mm -hmm. pounds. 
this is from the mm -hmm. uh, a new king james so so he identifies mm -hmm. with jesus at this point he's dead he'd been, he'd been crucified but mm -hmm. uh, even though he was fearful at first he went ahead and uh, done the right thing mm -hmm. at the end at the end okay yeah because he had buried him right um Okay, okay, that, that that was good, but I, um, but I'm thinking I I appreciate everything y'all said, but I, I think one question was not answered unless I did not hear you guys. Uh, and 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 then Sister Laura, maybe you, you were talking on that at first when you was talking about the baptism in in uh, the upper room, but I was wondering, did you believe that? Nicodemus was among those that was on the day of Pentecost in the upper room that were saved. On that, I, I, I can't remember all that was up there. I think there is a scripture that lists the names of the ones that were up there, but I don't recall Nicodemus per se being there. But okay. that's not to say that somewhere, you know, if you're around the Lord enough, something is going, you know, yeah. I believe that the Lord could have drawn him, but I, I don't recall a scripture, mm -hmm. you know, I might have to do, mm -hmm. that's a good study lesson. That that would be a, that's a good thought provoking question because it makes me want to go in there and look it up, <laughs> even though I'm driving, but to see, well, was he in the room at that time? Because I, I do recall there was a scripture that listed the disciples, but I don't, and then some of the women, but I don't know if Nicodemus was in that group, but that's a good mm -hmm. question to go do some research. Um, but I do know the ones in the upper room did get filled with the Holy Ghost, but at mm -hmm. that point, the, the baptism, because it's being born of the water, they only had at that point the, the repentance baptism, um, okay. uh, which was uh, um, John's baptism. But then mm -hmm. it talks about when Peter got up and stood and got to preaching and convicted them. And not only those that were speaking in tongues, he was speaking to everybody in the house, but he made the right. difference. He didn't say repentance, uh, just repentance, but right. to be baptized in the name, he put emphasis on that name because there were other people were getting baptized in other people's name. Because you know how when you get baptized, people think you're more spiritual or more saved when, you, when the preacher baptizes you versus just the deacon or something. And they were saying, well, I, there was a scripture that talks about I was baptized by Apollos and uh, baptized by such and such. And, but, but, but in the, when Peter stood up, he made emphasis on that name and in the name of Jesus, because they were, wow. other people got baptized in other people's names, but the mm. name of Jesus, because it, and I think it's in 19th uh, chapter of Acts, where it says no other name given unto man and which you can be saved. So mm -hmm. I think it's in the 19th chapter. Uh -huh. And um, so it's that name that makes the difference. Because it's just like now, a lot of people are baptized, but they're baptized uh, by Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Those aren't names. Right. Except right. the only name is Jesus. So right. they're, they're baptized in titles. It says right. the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Well, what's the name? There's a whole lot right. of fathers. There are a whole lot of sons. Mm -hmm. and, and, but, but that's not the name. Because if I said, right. get up, Father, that ain't my name. I might, uh, you might Brother. be a father, but that's not your name. So the, the name, name is what made the difference. Come on, get over here. Absolutely. Is there somebody else trying to say something? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so Are we okay? Is uh, was somebody else trying to say something? Okay. Well, Sister Laura, yes, yes, you are right. Uh, even in witnessing. That's one of the things that I use when I tell people, I, I you know, 
let them know, you know, if it's a female, you know, your mother, you know, your sister, your aunt, your uncle. And then I ask them, do they have checkbooks? And in some cases they do. I said, well, how do you sign that check? And they tell me, you know, with my name. I say, exactly. I said, so you can't sign it with sister, auntie, uh, mom, and all of that. You have to apply a name on that check in order for it to be good. And they say, yeah. I say, it's the same way with Jesus. When you know, when you're being baptized, you have to be baptized in his name. The name has to be applied. I said, yeah. because for one, there's power in the name. I said, a yeah. lot of times people People get baptized in all those titles and then they wonder why they can't do right. I said, they ain't got no power. <laughs> so, you know, um, and, and the name is very important and interesting and, and you're right. And it's almost everything we do, even when we just praying and say a prayer, we have to end that prayer in Jesus name. Yeah, so, that's good. Huh? So that's good. Yep. It's it's in the name. Right. It's all about the name. That is it. All about the name. But it's so interesting how you have people that believe in Jesus or believe God, but they don't really believe the name. Because it's once they've been baptized in those titles, it's hard to get them to change that. I'll have to use oh. that one about the checkbook. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, that's good I, analogy. Yeah, that's that's the one I always use because you know they can they can really understand that, you know. And so uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But yes, but but you guys, I have enjoyed the lesson, and I think I have concluded for tonight. But I would love to hear any other comments you all may have. Anything else you can let me know, even if it's on Sunday, something come up to me and say, "Hey, Minister Jones, you know the lesson you taught. Here's some stuff you can add to it. You know that you didn't mention. I would be more than happy to receive that." Got time. <laughs> uh, I can't let you go this quick. You know, I didn't I, hear I, you. I find, no, I was just saying that I find I find it interesting that that Jesus is trying to prepare Nicodemus for a deeper relationship. And, and, and as you already no. mentioned, it was he he kept thinking in the natural. He kept thinking in the flesh, but it was a spiritual thing that Jesus was trying to get him to see. Um, Bishop Mary has been talking about uh, uh, this spiritual thing that when Adam died, he died spiritually when he ate other fruit. Mm. And so that spiritual man died back in the garden. And so now, now Jesus is taking them back to that, that first fall and trying to get him to understand that the relationship was broken way back in Adam, even before he understood all that was going on. And so this, this rebirth, this, this born again, was talking about a spiritual thing. And uh, that was a whole new concept. You talking about a collision. That was definitely a collision between the flesh and the spirit. There was that war there. So there was a lot going on there. And mm -hmm. Here's a man thinking, now he was looking for the Messiah and he didn't mm -hmm. really understand what he was looking for. And he was thinking he's right, but he's wrong. He was rounding mm -hmm. the base, but he was still out. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. And so mm -hmm. when we come across people like this, uh, we have to understand that no matter how well they mean or intend to be, we have to bring them the, the revelation that is not a, a, a fleshly thing, it's a spiritual thing. And that's what Jesus mm -hmm. was trying to get him to understand and to see. 
Mm -hmm. That's my two cents. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was good. Find some more two senses. It's okay. Um, <laughs> okay. And then, sis, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. I was just going to say, too, um, when he, he came, uh, Nicodemus, uh, you know, came to him by night, and he mm -hmm. was curious. And a lot of mm -hmm. people hang around church and uh, are there because they're curious, but God has right. to open it up and reveal it unto them. And like you said, you, they may come, but like I said, I don't remember reading the scripture that he ever got saved, but, mm -hmm. you know, unless someone else can uh, find that particular scripture, but, uh, but we would hope that he would be being around Jesus and getting hands-on information upfront information right. um mm -hmm. but here like you said he was a teacher he was uh, mm -hmm. a, a part of that sanhedrin group and they were supposed to be teachers of the law and and they were looking for the messiah and here he was mm -hmm. standing in front of them and he didn't even know who he was that that's mm -hmm. that's something uh, to be around church and being in church and not even know the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, uh, know who you're worshiping, know who you're serving. That that's yeah. a scary thing, um, you know. So religion is not. Uh, people can get real religious and think, you know, that that's it. But the religion, if we gather together so we can uh, exalt the name of Jesus or, or lift him up. But, but that right. religion part doesn't save you. It, it's, right. it's the relationship is what saved you. And I think you quoted right. it. It was in Matthew about seventh chapter. I think it is around the seventh chapter where it says, I did uh, something about I cast out devils. I did, I preached in right. your name. I did, you know, these many works. Mm. but and then the know, lord says i never knew you and right and that's scary that's a scary thing you do all I these was, things out of religion but not have yeah. a relationship right you know that is uh the biggest fear i have and i i when i first i can remember when i first read that you know you know all these people talking about this that and the other they did this and he said yeah but i never knew you you workers of iniquity and I'm just thinking to myself, oh, my God, I, I just can't, could not fathom the fact that this same creator that created me don't know me. Oh, I can't even fathom that in my mind. And I'm going, wow. Now, that is really something as far as I'm concerned. I definitely would not want to hear those words. You know, because this and, and is... Until you have to... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, go ahead, finish. I was going to say, you have to complete the process. You can't just have one part of the process and not the complete process. It says, repent, born of the water. And a lot mm -hmm. of people stop at the water. And, right. But then you also have to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not talking yeah. about just half filled. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about overflowing filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. And, it's and a promise. you're right. Sometimes people don't even understand it too. Have you noticed how a lot of people would say Holy Spirit, but they won't say Holy Ghost? It's like Holy Ghost is foreign to them. And we got some Bible scholars on the line. Brother yeah. Aaron, uh, brother. Y'all well, have a comment tonight. Uh, Jump on it. <laughs> is there a difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? Well, to me, the Holy Ghost is just, it feels more piercing. <laughs> you know, and maybe there's not, but it just feels more piercing to me. And I guess being uh, apostolic, 
um, you know, and raised in apostolic, that's all we pretty much ever heard was the Holy Ghost. Anybody can jump in anytime. any time. That's Hello. just me. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Who's speaking? What, what, what was the question? Uh, Sister, uh, Sister Bess, a ask your question again. Is there a, you said, is something how people will say <laughs> the Holy Spirit and not say the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I ask, is there a difference? I, it, to me, it sounds like, I mean, if it's the Spirit of God, they're the same. So, the, Bible, the Bible lets us know that there is but one Spirit. And In the Bible, it is, it is referred to as the Holy Ghost. It's referred to as the Spirit of Christ is referred to as the Holy Spirit, but it's all talking about the one same Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of Christ or the Spirit of God. So it's the same it's only thing. one. It's all it's, it's the self same one Spirit. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. when people in the nominal church they'll say Holy Spirit because they're referring to the uh, third person in the Trinity, so they see it as a as a separate entity or a separate person because they don't know. Mm -hmm. So they, they believe what their pastor has told them, what they've been taught or what they've been born into or what they've been right. raised in. So they don't understand. And then if I re if I be remember correctly, I don't believe there is a scripture saying that Nicodemus was in the upper room. We see mm -hmm. Nicodemus as he's talking to Jesus. And then we see Nicodemus again in the scripture when he goes and get the body of Jesus off the cross and puts him in the tomb. Mm -hmm. Now, we can speculate who are all yeah, the 120 in the upper room, just like we can mm -hmm. speculate who were the 3,000. I mm -hmm. believe that he could be one of the number, but mm -hmm. we don't have any scripture because right. we see him touched by God we see him start to really see Jesus as the Messiah because we see him get the body down. We don't see any other the, any other the Pharisees or Sadducees there trying to get Jesus' body down. So we know he was touched. So, mm -hmm. but we don't have no scripture to mm -hmm. say that he was one of the hundred and twenty, nor or or one of the three thousand. So, mm -hmm. but I just believe that he could be, mm -hmm. but that's as far as that we can go. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with you. That's what, um, you know, was said, uh, I believe, but it was pure speculation, you know, but I believe that too, but we don't know, like you said, you know, so it was just a great um, discussion, something to provoke thought, uh, but good information has come from it. So and then it, to, go ahead. I was going to say too, and then when uh, Brother Aaron, or Minister Elder Aaron, was saying about the different names of the Spirit, I thought about it too when he was talking about he's known as the Comforter too. He's known by different, you know, but it's yeah. the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so, because he said, "Told him I'm going to leave you." the comforter so what is that comforter it's his spirit um mm -hmm. that he's right. gonna send back mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and said uh go back and wait till you be endured with power on high i believe yes yeah. yes uh and is is there any other comments or questions or uh Whatever, um, if not, uh, we are at our hour, I believe, or are we? No? Yeah. We do. Yeah. Um, any more dialogue? You know, uh, hey, certainly welcome it.
there was one thing that I like about this is that Jesus went to meet his need. He needed to mm. know about the kingdom. And mm. I say that to say this for us. There are people, we know their status, we know where they come from, we know their position in life, and we can't be afraid to go speak to them the word of God in truth and in love. And so mm. uh, when we come to someone like Nicodemus, someone that mm -hmm. is respected in society, someone that uh, don't believe like we believe, hopefully mm. uh, we can convey to them the truth in love and get their attention to understand that it takes more than a fleshly uh, desire or that this thing, that this rebirth is more than just words, it's more than just works. It's about the relationship. That's my two, my, that's my other two cents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you again. Anyone else? Evangelist Morrison, you've been mighty quiet tonight. Huh? I, I didn't hear. That's okay. Uh, so if everyone uh, is through commenting, uh, then uh, I'm done. Do I turn it over to anybody or do we? No, Evangelist, you, you would dismiss us in prayer, but I do have a quick announcement. Okay, go um, ahead. A uh, couple of things this weekend, um, we'll be having our young people services. For those who uh, are visiting on the line, we invite you to come out on Sat Sunday. For our young people, we've got a great speaker, the young people will be in charge of the services and I believe after the 11 o'clock there'll be a fellowship uh, meeting in the dining room. Um, also on this coming in Tuesday night the missionaries and ministers will be having a great speaker on witnessing and how to witnessing and knowing what to say because this lesson really lines up with it with Nicodemus with, uh, and, and going to Jesus and being a witness. Um, so if you're interested in more, we got an a excellent uh, speaker on Tuesday night at 730, none other than Elder Anthony Walt or District Elder Anthony Walton will be our speaker, and um, he will be talking to the missionaries, ministers, and anyone that want to learn a little bit more about witnessing and going out on the street. That's this coming in Tuesday at 730, I invite you to come on out and join us for a high time in the Lord. Invite your friends and mm -hmm. just come on out. <laughs> and then um, any other announcements? Uh, well, um, the, the, I uh, would just like I'm to say, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, 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 go ahead, I, I'll, I'll come in right after you. You're fine. You sure? You can go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, the the only thing I got for for young people on Sunday, uh, where there there are two colors where that we're cut, we're asking people to wear if they they want to. Uh, since uh since of course we're representing the young people, uh, we're asking the uh, people that they want they can wear blue to kind of bring uh for uh, because it is uh, Autism Awareness Month, and then also uh, wear orange for uh, leukemia awareness. So. Blue or orange, either one, whichever one you want to do on this Sunday in support of those two things. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Also, I would like to just ask uh, you all to continue to pray for my sister, uh, KK. Uh, you know, she's um, just kind of having some uh, issues right now. Uh, so just keep her in your prayer. Also, I have a friend, a very good friend by the name of Belinda uh, Patterson. Um, I talked with her the other day because I hadn't, hadn't spoke to her uh, for a couple of weeks. And um, when I called her, her birthday and mine are, are right together. And so we have in years past always, you know, gone out to eat on our birthdays. And so I was calling to remind her that our birthday was coming up and we need to find a place to go and eat. 
And uh, she usually very upbeat, but she wasn't this particular day and just told me, well, Vanessa, I just think I have to get back with you on that. She said, I just lost my daughter um, that just the day before. That's her only child. Um, Mm -hmm. They were in Louisville. She was complaining about a leg. And she just said if she could take a couple of Tylenols and lay down, she believed she would be all right. But she never woke up. So I just asked if you all would pray for that family and just keep her lifted. Uh, And that's it, basically. And also, can you remember uh, Sister Strong? Um, God is blessing. We want him to keep on blessing. And, All right. and just pray for her, keep her encouraged and her healing. All right. All right. If that's all, if all minds are clear, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And we just want to thank him for his goodness. We thank him for his grace. We thank him for his mercy. We thank him and praise him for all things in his name. We thank him for this lesson on tonight, oh Lord. We thank you for the eyes and ears that you had opened up, Lord God, the questions that were out there, Lord God. Lord God, and we just thank and praise you, Lord God, and thanks for everyone's in, Lord God. Lord God, and we thank and we praise and magnify your most holy name, Lord, because you are worthy, Lord, and you're worthy to be praised, oh God. We thank you for every individual that was on this line tonight and participated, and just those that wanted to sit back and just listen. So, Lord God, we ask that you bless each and every one, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise your holy name. We take nothing for granted, oh God. And, Lord God, we just want to give you all the glory, Lord. And all the praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Amen. Good night. I love you guys. Love you. Good night. Good night. Good night.